Good morning. Many would say, thank God it's Friday. I hope that's what you're echoing as well. Very glad you could join us on Off the Press program this morning on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm not alone as usual. I have a political analyst with me today, a familiar face on this program, Uguchuku Ikako. Thank you very much for thank coming you, in. Thank you for having me. All right. I hope you've had a good week, though. Yeah, I'm back. Not bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, this day newspaper is passed for review. We have quite a number of them, so we'll just go as, um, see what, what, how many we can take, actually. Uh, two colonels and 26 soldiers killed in your big Bonu attacks. That's uh, the screamer you're looking at now. Military sends reinforcement. Evacuate bodies. Oni visits president. Calls for security before in southwest. Senate, security situation creating humanitarian crisis in the north. Uh, that's another one for you at the very top of the page. Okay, let's uh, look at what's at the bottom first before we go uh, to the top. Uh, still on your screen, you, you see finally INEC tenders documents sought by Atiku at Tribunal. And there's a picture of the president. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Uh, that's from the Oni of Ife Oba Adeye. Okay, uh, there's Buhari. Africa loses $60 billion yearly to illicit financial flows. Uh, if you've been uh, following us, uh, that was captured in our news just moments ago, but we have an analyst here to help make more sense of it. Okay, let's flip to the top of the paper now. There you go. Uh, FIRS moves to capture additional $25 million in tax net. Uh, then rising debt threats to Nigeria's economy, says Atiku. Uh, those are some of the stories on the front page. A quick flip to the back now. You will see who speaks for the Yoruba. Uh, there's a picture of the Oba in, in glare on the back page. Dialogue with Nigeria. That's uh, under where they're writing who speaks for the Yoruba. Tributes to Nduka. That's also on the back page. Your thoughts, please. Well, I think, I think uh, in, the, what I've dominated the headlines over the last few days has been the the high level of insecurity across the country mm. and uh, we're not seeing a stop so far all right uh the step that the uh, the only of if uh, obade made to see president buhari well i think i can interpret it in two ways right one is that uh there is pressure on southwest leaders to speak to the presidency to say okay this is not what we're bargaining for this is not the deal all right so uh him going there is a good one it's a good one for him and it's a good one for them it's not, not for anything to get the attention of the presidency but i doubt if anything is going to happen all right uh this is not the first time that we've seen a high-ranking uh, traditional rulers got to meet the presidency and the rest of them from across the country so um nothing is happening we just lost soldiers we just lost two colonels and 26 soldiers we're not at war really unfortunate. And, and that's 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 a lot of number, two corner, well trained, uh, 26 soldiers to insurgents, all right. And uh, this is the same government that have come out over and over again to say that we've technically defeated Boko Haram and the rest of them. So, everybody knows there's something wrong with that phrase <laughs> technically defeated. No, no, what does that mean, really? Because they don't want to accept the responsibility, all right. Uh, leadership has to do with accepting responsibility. If when you can you know, tell yourself the honest truth and say, okay, this is how this, this is how bad the situation is, all right, and this is what we're going to do. So, uh, seeing they've taken care of the Boko Haram is trying to absorve themselves of some key responsibilities. This is not just, you know, we're not just talking about Boko Haram again right now, all right. The security issue is multifaceted. We we'll talk about the banditry, we we'll talk about the kidnapping, we we'll talk about uh, the pastoral conflict as the Fulani Hesman and the rest of them. So, there's a lot of issues on the ground. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the, I don't think a, a single visit will sort it out, all right. Uh, the presidency and his security chief need to sit down, all right? He should stop traveling. They need to sit down, lock themselves in a room, and get to work. Find a solution. And get to work. All right, let's see what's on the punch now. Uh, I think you get uh, 55 cartons of documents close this case today. Uh, we also have uh, Tiku arrested uh, suspects not yet linked with Olakuni's murder. That's uh, from the police. you find out on page 10 of the paper. Boko Haram kills Connell. Uh, that story was also captured here. Uh, they're going with a smaller headline. But the big headline for the Punch newspaper this morning is Fish out bad eggs among Fulani. Oni tells Buhari. Leaders shouldn't keep silent on insecurity. That's uh, Jonathan. And of course, you see the uh, very poor state of the road and students, uh, pupils going to school uh, captured on Lekiekbe Expressway. Uh, that's the pictorial screamer this morning for the Punch newspaper. Uh, just beneath that picture, you will see gunmen killed two soldiers, a doctor expatriate in a choir bomb. 
Uh, you also see, I raped my daughter to test her virginity. What an absurdity. Ah, you need to read that story on page four of the paper. Uh, you, you should read it. Uh, that's what the suspect is saying in a case of rape. Siasia um, kidnappers demand 70 million ransom. The last time, I think it was about 50 million. Uh, now they seem to think it's a lucrative business. Well, let's hope that the woman is brought back safe uh, without, hopefully, without paying uh, the ransom. Calf fires Pinnick, Mikel Igalo exits. Super Eagles. Outrage at soldier driving against traffic assaults Lagos motorists. Abiodu seeks assemblies not to stop Abiola attack varsity. Uh, on the back page of the Punch newspaper, we have Olakuri, Obasan just later, and a nation on tenterhooks, uh, Friday musings with Ayo. Uh, you also see uh, pensioners on the back page at the Nigerian Union of Pensioners Secretariat during Pension Transition Arrangement Directorate Verification in Ibadro. Uh, sometimes I get worried. Uh, my, my own mother goes from Imo to Delta almost on a regular basis because of verification exercise. And they put these people's life at risk, putting them on the road all the time. It's really heartbreaking, the kind of things that our pensioners in this country uh, have to go through. Uh, that's on the pack page um, on uh, the Punch newspaper. For yeah, I think for me, uh, looking at the pictures of the student, right, these, are, these, are, these are little kids, all right? Um, look at the environment they are going to school. They have to put their legs in dirty water. Dirty. They open themselves to diseases and all sort of that. And I can bet you, all right, that the, the, the classroom are dilapidated structure, structure that doesn't just make sense. And here we are, our vice president was in London or UK a few days back, all right, to go and celebrate his son that was graduating. You could, you, could, you could see the disparity, all right? We have a vice president that his interest is going to UK to celebrate his son, and that is fine. And in Nigeria, people can hardly go to school. And even if they're going to school, they're passing through, uh, through hell just to get to the classroom to learn. Are these, guys, are these the people, are these are the kids that you think that they will be the future of Nigeria tomorrow? It's not possible, right? They can't give what they, can, they don't have. And also, this is Lagos State, all right? When, when a state where our governor, right, gave the super egos 144 million, I say it came out from his personal account. It doesn't make sense. All right. It yeah, it, we do have a problem with drainage in Lagos. States. Apart, no, apart, from, apart, from, apart from drainage, all right. There's a the, the whole leadership. There's, there's, a, there's a big, big problem. All right. Apart from the drainage system, if you fix the drainage, the classroom is still poor. All right. Oh, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's an issue that will have leaders that they don't care about themselves. You can't just give spike with around for four million, whereas students can students can move to their classroom. These are young students, and you call yourself the governor of Lagos State. So at the end of the day, you are not there. The, the purpose of leadership for you to come in and to help people have a better life. And the same thing with the vice president. So uh, people are traveling, like you say, people are moving from Delta State to Imo State, uh, from different state to another in, in Nigeria to go and ask for pension verification and the rest of them. We know how bad our highways are right now. So and then they don't care. So the, the issue is that, I don't know if they know, we'll keep saying this thing, but the issue is that uh, it, it, it rests on all citizens at the end of the day to start asking ourselves questions, all right? So for me, my kids go to school. For example, right, I'm a mother, I'm a parent, my kids go to school on that, same, on that same way every day. And I have a chance to meet the governor two months or one month after. And I start clapping because they gave me a bag of rice. I start saying that the governor is the best after any, any uh, uh, Mandela or, or whoever I can mention. So it doesn't make sense. So at the end of the day, if, if, the, if, the, uh, if the followers could start asking themselves questions, could start come, come to a place where we see the leaders, who can ask serious questions, all right? How can our children be going to such a place to go to school? Whereas your own kids in the UK, we don't understand that disparity. The moment we start asking our leaders question, I start demanding that, see, the little things that you do is not good enough. It doesn't even make sense. Some so. have advocated that it should be put in some law that if so long as you're a public official, your child must can, attend school. I can tell you how many laws that we have in this country that at the end of the day, is, see, apart, apart, from, apart from the laws, yeah, they're all good, right? Enforcement is important. Awareness is important. People need to know that this is a part of process. Like, I was happy when, when I heard a story about the Legosians, uh, the, uh, the outrage against the soldier that abused the uh, Legosian yesterday on the road. See, that is how it should be. You don't allow people to get away with, uh, 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 with bullying or with uh, things that are not, that are unconstitutional because they have a, uh, because they have one form of level of power wow. within the society. So there should be question, there should be complaint. You can't see this thing, all right? And the funny thing is that people see this and just like zone off. 
Like, like it doesn't concern. It concerns you because at the end of the day, it affects all of us. Still talking security. I, I want you to speak on this. Uh, arrested suspects not linked with Olakunri's uh, murder, please. It, it seemed that they, the, there was an aim as at the time of announcing that suspect has been arrested in connection with the case of Olakunri. And now uh, the police is saying that the suspects not linked with Olakunri's murder. Uh, what do you make of the handling of the case so far by the police and the information mechanism uh, to the people. I think, I think I think it shows it shows it shows the kind of police force that we have. All right, uh, people they are not ready to do their due diligence. All right, you don't just come out and announce something and and, and it's, it's defamation to say that this person is a suspect, this person is a criminal. All right, and few few minutes later, or a few hours later, you come out with the contrary statement. It doesn't make sense. All right, and if these are the same police officers that will expect to help us solve the issue of banditry, uh, uh, the hessmen and rest of them. Why in a serious trouble? Because at the end of the day, we need people that understand the importance of investigation. It can take time, it can take hours, it can take days. But the truth is that we expect you to come out with the real information, with the most important information that is verified, that is true. So you don't just give us uh, information. Maybe something happened behind the scene that we don't know, and we come out to tell us a different story. That is not the police force that was. The same police force that they killed uh, a, a, a mobile police officer in a bank in nowhere. It came out. They didn't say anything. When people start pressuring them online, they came out and said different things. So it does not. It doesn't show confidence on the part of the police force, and it's, it's, no matter how much you give them, no matter the equipment you buy for them, these are things that matter. These are things that define them as, as a team, as a force. So they need to look into it beyond asking for more equipment without working with the one they have already. All right, let's see what's on the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, TUC rejects governor's secular on new pay. That's uh, on the front page of the paper. And, of course, the Oni's visit to Buhari is captured on the front page. It says the Southwest does not want no war at all. Uh, presidents to speak on Ruga. Well, we certainly look forward to that. $60 billion yearly outflow undermines Africa's stability. Uh, you might want to know who is talking. I'll just give you a hint. It's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. NNPC to supply 10% of India's crude oil. And then uh, we have Musu, uh, this one that says, abductors of CSS mom demand 17 million naira. Uh, we've captured that one already and the other paper. Uh, INEC provides a ticket with documents or sinks below technical support. Uh, what does that mean? Oil sinks below technical support. Anyway, uh, we also have other headlines there. Colonel Captain, five others killed in ambush. Uh, that's um, uh, some stories for you. Edo government to Rebs. You lack constitutional power to short state assembly. Uh, the Edo state uh, drama is still going on. And on the back page, we have the usual. Egbo Mo Yoruba and Project Nigeria. Uh, hardball, bronze. No more golding. Okay, that's uh, something for you on hardball now. Over to you. I I'd like you to speak on this uh, Edo governorship um, House of Assembly issue. Well, I, I think for me, uh, is uh, the whole thing that is in Edo is politicized. All right, uh, the current governor of Baseke is not in good terms with Adam Soshimole. All right, so uh, I was talking about. I think the election, the election is close to the door. So uh, this whole thing is not about the people. It's not, it's not about the good people of Edo State. It's about the political elite trying to uh, uh, make way for themselves illegally. Uh, the sad thing is that I think uh, the National Assembly, all right, the, the reps, all right, is trying to get involved in something that I don't think constitutional is allowed to, all right. This is a state matter. This has to do with the Edo state and the rest of them. They should be able to sort themselves out. And uh, it shows the kind of leaders who, who have, all right, that uh, at the end of the day, the interest of the state should be paramount against against, against whoever is the politician, be it Adams or Shimole, uh, be it uh, uh, the current governor. So for me, it's sad, all right? It still mirrors what we see uh, on, on, on the national stage about, about the country, all right? It shouldn't, there's no need for the only to visit President Buhari to tell him what he needs to do. There's no need. There's no need for uh, a, an Arushego Basanjo or a Professor Woluso Inka to write a letter to say, this is it, all right? You have security briefing every day. You have your people working with you every day. So you don't need you don't need an extra push to do the things that you're supposed to do. So at the end of the day, you see that the people that are supposed from Edo State to the to, to, to the national level, the people that are supposed to step in to do things for the country, they are not interested in doing that. So it's all about themselves. It's all about the people. So uh, the question has to come in where, where the people start asking asking the leaders, okay, you are there. What are you doing for us? All right, this is not what it's supposed to be, and these are the conversations that we're supposed to have because we can't continue on this trajectory. There is a 
part for the leaders to play, and there is a part for the followers to play. Uh, our, only, our part is not just to uh, vote every four years. As an active citizen, you're supposed to know what's happening, right? For example, the House of Rep, uh, Femi Bajamila, the speaker, already has more than 30 or 40 special assistants. So it does not make sense, all right? This is, this, you, you, are, you are inflicting more, more pain on the country because at the end of the day, the cost of running these offices, the special assistant, it seems like it has an executive branch inside and so it does not make sense. So these are the questions we're supposed to have. Why would we point this thing out every day? Why would we say, okay, these are the issues, all right? So when you have an avenue to speak, when you have an avenue to have these people, ask them these questions. These are important things that we're supposed to discuss because at the end of, at the, end of the day, what is the, what is the most important thing in those state? It's about the people. It's about developing the people. It's about making sure that life, it's about making sure that Millions of people there that are under poverty are lifted up. So if the leaders there can't work together at the end of the day, it's to the detriment of their own people. Okay, I, I'd like you to talk a bit about this uh, CSCS mom's uh, kidnap. This is the second time. The first time, uh, nobody's 100% sure if a ransom was paid, but she was kidnapped, ransom was demanded, and then four years down the line, there is a repeat. CSCS last time cried. This time, we don't know what he's going to do about it. What do you make of this particular case? Well, it's, it's sad, right? I remember the time that uh, Mikhail Obi's dad was kidnapped, right? He was on national duty for Nigeria. His dad was kidnapped. Uh, this is the second time this is happening to uh, CSCR's mom, Samson CSCR's mom. He was a former uh, Spy Ghost player, a former coach. So you see that uh, not just from, on, not just at the North is already Across the country, the, our internal security architecture is broken. Uh, we have, we have, we have uh, the insecurity is poor. Because at the end of the day now, we've had stories where, where people that have been kidnapped in the past come out to say that, OK, uh, the police helped, uh, the, uh, helped uh, work to the uh, criminals or the kidnappers to deliver money. So at the end of the day, it's sad, all right? And there is nothing that says that they will bring this woman back alive. Because we've had stories where uh, people that have been kidnapped paid ransom and they killed and them at, and they killed them at the end of the day. So it is a sad situation. And also because this is the, the thing is that because at the end of the day, see, punishment, enforcement is key, right? Because these kidnappers kidnap and go away free. There's no punishment. Nobody gets punished for doing all this. So you see, it looks like a thriving industry right now. Because what does it mean that you can kidnap someone the first time, four years after you go back go to back kidnap to the, the same, same person. person? So and this cycle keep continuing because you know what? Nobody is checkmating them. So it's, it's a big industry, and that's the truth. It's a big industry as, as it stands at the moment. And it, 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 it goes beyond, see, it goes beyond on me. We have to put on in front pages that you want to, that is not. Yeah, it, it that's goes, practically what's all on the all, front page. All, 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 Page. The so, visitor of the only the the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the the king in brass or in Boni or the, 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 the king in the, in the Niger Delta, would they go and visit Buhari before he knows that there is any security issue uh, in, the, in, in the Niger Delta? So also the governors are failing, but at the end of the day, the core security rests upon the presidency because the IGP and rest of them, because of our security architecture, our security structure, everything, they all report to, uh, report to the president. So at the end of the day, it's sad because it means that anybody, 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 there's nobody that is safe at the moment. Anybody can be picked up and that's, that's very sad. Well, insecurity is again the, on the front corner on the Vanguard newspaper and the visit to Buhari is also captured um, on the Vanguard newspaper this morning, a smiling president and the uh, traditional ruler. Um, let, let's see this new one. Uh, Oshu verdict, dancing better than treasury looting, a delicate replies Uyetola. Uh, that's uh, on the Oshu situation. There's been a final conclusion from the Supreme Court now. So we know that uh, Oyetola is the governor of Oshu state, but there seem to be uh, some misunderstanding there. Yeah, uh, the, there, there is the, the, oh, definitely, definitely. Even like yesterday, there was a, there was a trending video of, of the Chief Justice. He doesn't understand the difference between a technicality and technica. And then uh, you, 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 you weep for this nation, all right? If somebody has, has that, somebody high placed as our chief justice does not understand, because he was asked this question in, in, uh, inside the National Assembly, Mr. Dabariba asked him. And he says something that doesn't make sense, all right? So uh, it goes to see how our court has been interpreting uh, judgment over the law. And it's not, it's not encouraging. Um, for me, it's sad, but uh, a delegate has to find a way to uh, get over what has happened and uh, see how he can move on and with his life. And do life. But the most interesting thing on the Vanguard security page is, is where the only said, where, where he said, we are ready to defend ourselves, all right? We are coming to a point where people will start uh, defending themselves if this insecurity situation continues uh, like this, all right? Not just in the Northeast, we see Sassia won't happen in the South side. So across the South is across the South side, even the middle bed. So uh, the South West is not safe. So we don't want to get a situation where, it's, it's, where it's everything turns to wide, wide West. Everybody's on there. People are trying to protect, uh, defend themselves because the security agency cannot stand up and do their job. So we need the presidency and everybody that's interested, the leaders for once, all right? From uh, last week, uh, uh, 
Balatinibu said that it was the will of God or whatever that the young girl was killed. So it doesn't make sense. It's not the will of God for anybody to die. All right. The okay, will of uh, God is for we the were actually out of time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I need you to speak quickly on this El Zagzaki's overseas treatment. I M N kicks as Quarter John's ruling on bail application. Uh, your thoughts quickly. <laughs> what, in like so 10 seconds. What's happened to El Zagzaki is unconstitutional. He's been there for more, for close to four years, and the court has asked him to go. And that is the country we are in. People are not saying anything. The president doesn't care. He's there because the executive wants him to be there and it's wrong right if the court the court supposed to the court supposed to be ideally the final the final the, fi the final place if the court says something it happens but here we are more than four years after the court has said something nobody is asking the presidency anything judiciary is not asking the presidency anything the so it does not make sense and it means that someone can wake up and pick you up tomorrow and you're there journalists are is still in prison and these are part of the issues and these are part of the challenges Thank you very much, Yuguchiku, for coming on. Thank you for, ha thank you for having me. Uh, before I say uh, my adios for today, I will um, quickly look at the Vanguard Sports on the back page. What's captured there is the 2019 African uh, final, Senegal versus Algeria. Uh, we also have something on CAF drops Panik as first vice president. Um, Eagles can win 2021 Afghan if, that's according to their coach there, um, Apo Borie advises NFF not to overhaul Eagles. These are some of the stories you will find uh, on your screen now um, that you can go read uh, from uh, your vendor. I want to thank you very warmly for staying with us. Uh, please go to your vendors and take a look at the headlines and read in depth so you can have a better understanding. On Monday, we will be back with all the latest headlines for you. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Have a pleasant day.